Hello, this is Alex from Restore Revise, and if you checked out my last video about the Sega Remote Arcade system, those wireless controllers for the Sega Genesis and that series of consoles, you may have noticed that my capture quality was not great. Uh, I actually decided to make a joke about it at one point while I was editing um, because I didn't quite realize how bad it was until I was looking at it on a PC screen. So I went through troubleshooting the issue. I thought at first that the connections between all the different systems might have been dirty and using some contact cleaner on those main points, uh, especially the point here between the mix cable for the Model 1 Genesis uh, to the 32X's video in port, that definitely led to some improvements, but depending on what the video was doing at any given time, it wasn't just when the console was powered off and then on again. It could also be if your scene, for example, went to pure black and then came back up, you could definitely see some problems with the video signal. Sometimes uh, the red channel was entirely missing. Sometimes it was there and it was a very poor quality. You could tell that the OSSC and the Core U were having a hard time picking the signal up and actually showing it correctly. One of the many joys of owning a system this complex is that troubleshooting an issue like this can be a little difficult. You have a lot of different interconnects between the different pieces of hardware. You have the extension port going to the Sega CD. You have video out from your Genesis going to your 32X. And then in the case of a Model 1 Genesis, you have this additional mixing cable with an interconnect here that can be a problem. You also have audio coming from the headphone port out of the Model 1 Genesis into the back of the Mega CD, which was an issue at one point when my connections were dirty. So to troubleshoot where the issue was coming from, I went ahead and disconnected my Model 1 Genesis from this whole setup that you see here. And on its own, everything looks and sounds fine. Added the Mega CD back, looks fine. Added the 32X, the problems came back. There are a few common points of failure that I wanna go ahead and check on the 32X. I wanna look at the capacitors. There are also some ribbon cables that go between the two main boards of the console that are likely to pop out and cause other issues, get dirty, things like that. I'd like to check those just to be safe. I also want to make sure that the solder joints on the video connections, both the in and the out, are all solid. I'm sure that this could have been jostled at some point, made the connection loose, and it's just gotten worse with age. You can just reflow the solder to fix that sort of issue. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble my 32X, walk you through that process, and then check out those common points of failure that I mentioned earlier and see if there's anything else I can see while I'm in there. Hopefully I can get the system back to 100% looking great. And that means we'll be ready for the next video I have in the pipeline. It'll be a nice surprise. If the 32X is connected to a Genesis console, go ahead and remove all the cables and then gently pull the 32X up and out of the cartridge slot. You did use those RF shields in the cartridge slot, right? On the bottom of the 32X itself, there are four Phillips head screws. There are two smaller Phillips head screws on the section of the console that goes inside the Genesis cartridge slot. With those screws removed, the top of the shell should come off with a gentle pull. The 32X is primarily comprised of two circuit boards. You can already see part of the top board here. Right now, it's mostly covered by RF shielding, and we'll need to remove it in order to get a better look at the board itself. Believe it or not, those bodge wires and hot glue that you see near the cartridge port are factory original. We'll see more of that as we get a little deeper. Once all the screws around the border of the shield have been removed, the shield itself should come off pretty easily. Now we can get a better look at that top board. Right now, I'm inspecting the capacitors for any open vents or signs of leaking fluid underneath. That could cause damage to the board and indicate that the capacitor needs to be replaced. Now you can really see how many of those bodge wires they had to add to the system.
Those ribbon cables and the slots they connect to seem to be in pretty good shape, but I'm going to clean them while I'm in here just to be safe. The board itself is a little bit grungy, so I'm going to use an old toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol to clean it gently. So far, I don't see any red flags on this system, but a good cleaning certainly can't hurt. There are a few more screws that have to come out in order to get the boards out of the shell. Most of these screws are different from each other, so make sure you organize them carefully so you'll know where they go when it's time to reassemble everything. Once both boards are out of the shell, be very careful handling them because those bodge wires and ribbon cables are the only things holding them together, and they can be very fragile. Now it'll be much easier to get those ribbon cables out of the system completely and clean both ends. Right now I'm looking at the solder joints on the bottom of the video connections to look for any crack joints or anything else that could be out of order. It seems like things are okay, so I'll just go ahead and clean the bottom of the board with some more IPA in the toothbrush. To clean all the connections inside and outside of the console, I'm going to use this contact cleaner. Make sure you use something that claims to be plastic safe, especially when you're dealing with older hardware like this. If your board already looks pretty clean, you don't need to use a lot. Just use short, controlled sprays, and make sure you hit everything that needs cleaning. I've seen some people recommend WD-40 as a contact cleaner, but that's not a good idea. It isn't made for that purpose, and will actually leave a film on your connections, which will cause even worse problems later on. While I'm in here, I'm also going to clean the contacts that go into the Genesis. They have some dark marks on the end that won't come off with spray alone. So I'm going to use a typical eyeglass cleaning cloth in conjunction with the spray and some gentle pressure to remove them. Those contacts look amazing now. Now that everything's been inspected and cleaned, it's time to reassemble the 32X. Be very careful when reinstalling those ribbon cables. They require a decent amount of force. The adhesive on these ferrite chokes has dried and cracked with age, so I took a second just to realign everything. When reassembling the lower portion of the console, the RF shields like to slide out of place. It's best to take things slowly and line everything up before you screw it back together. Now, both boards should slide easily back into the top of the shell. When reinstalling these screws, I actually like to back them out a few times before screwing them in. That's because they're going right into plastic, and I want to avoid cross-threading them or cracking the plastic. Installing this top shield can be a little tricky. I actually went around each screw twice and tightened them slightly to make sure everything was flush before finally securing them all. Now we just need to close the case up. Again, be sure to back out and align these screws carefully before you tighten them. They should not require a lot of force. Looking good. Now all that's left to do is test it. All right, here goes nothing. Hey, that looks much better than before. 
Well, now the real test is going to be if we can play a game and not have the video bug out in between loading screens or something like that. Also, we need to fix this hideous stretching. Now, one of the games I was seeing a lot of issues in before was Sonic CD, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a try just for consistency's sake. So before, the issue would occasionally get worse and sometimes a little better every time the screen went black, which in Sonic CD that happens every time you're transitioning from one level to another. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick up on a save game, but if the colors are really blown out, especially the pinks and reds in this save file, we'll know that nothing's changed. It's pretty rough, but... It's legible. You can see what it's supposed to look like, which is a big improvement from before. Yeah, there's some flickering in there. We're going to go ahead and try a Genesis game next, just to see if there's any difference. So it's pretty clear to see that the blue and the yellow in the logo are pretty messed up. I mean, the blue is faded to a purple, and the yellow has become more of like a neon green. I'm going to go ahead and bypass the 32X really quickly, have the video coming straight out of the Genesis, just to make sure it isn't something there too. With the video coming directly out of the Genesis, you can see it's entirely consistent, the colors are correct, the signal might even be a little bit cleaner. I mean, it's hard to tell when it's composite, but this looks consistent, this looks right. So there you have it, disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of a Sega 32X. I still have some lingering issues with the video signal on this console. If you run it for a few minutes, you can reboot the system as many times as you like and the video signal is perfectly stable. But if you're just hooking it up for the first time in a while and turning it on, it seems to be about a 50-50 chance as to whether or not the signal is going to be correct. I think some of that could be because I'm running it through a video transcoder, which is having a hard time picking up on an unstable signal. And I think some of it is just the age of the hardware we're dealing with as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me next time for the video that all of this was in preparation for. I think you'll find it worth it.